All right, I'd like to call a public utilities meeting to order at uh, 4.33. Please rise and join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Can anybody hear me? Indivisible. Uh, well, it's not here. I got no sound. We can hear you, Marty. Okay, uh, I don't see any us. public, uh, any new correspondence, Kathy? No. Yeah. Okay, uh, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of March 10th. Move. Second. Are there any additions, deletions? All well, those in favor of the minutes as presented? Aye. Aye. Yeah, no sound, Carol. Why does this happen to me all the time? We can hear you, Marty. All right. Uh, financial financial report. That's why they. What about they sound it? over here? No. No. This this is for me to speak, but they obviously can't hear me. <laughs> yes, so we hear you. Yeah, they started. I think. I think we've had a call. Yeah, back. Just, yeah. yeah, well, it doesn't. I've been clicking it. Nothing. Did you type to him? I just unmuted. I muted him. You, you unmuted? I just muted him just because. Oh, I yeah, but can, can you can you type in the, uh, the chat room there? That's me, though. Okay. That's <laughs> me. The host <laughs> muted me. I thought you muted him. He can hear you. Did you get his phone number? Ridiculous. I'm so sick of this. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Man. Next one, put your name to the phone. Yeah. <laughs> you want to answer his phone. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Your call has been forwarded to it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, hopefully he figured it out. Hello. Hey, Marty, we can hear you talking. Uh, I, can't, I can't hear anything. All right, he can't you? hear us. So tell him to maybe. My phone. Yeah, or just stay on my line here. Uh, or you, or you want to go on the other phone? But log on with on the phone for the meeting. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going for. All right, we approved the minutes. Did you have any comments about the minutes? No, I didn't have any comments. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, I, the financials. Debbie, that's you. She, she's muted. Hello. Hi, Pierce. I think we're looking at, we're going to look at the financial report first, I think. I, I don't have any, uh, any financials to report oh, as of now. She doesn't have any did, reports. Did you make okay. a copy? Yeah, that's in the packet. It should look like this. No. It's not in there. Oh, you know what? Maybe no, it is. Uh, I just had bills. Yeah, no, it is in there. It's not in there. I just looked. All right, we'll look over mine if you need to. It should be in the packet. Uh, Brad not being here, everything looks pretty good as far as uh, what the numbers are. We're positives on the first page. Yeah, that's 
and, and our revenues tended to be greater than 75% and we're three quarters of the way through the year and our expenses tended to be less than 75%. So I think they look pretty good as well. Oh, Who says that? Mark. Uh, why don't we table the financial report until next month? Then, motion to table the financial report until next month. Yeah. So Brad can yeah. explain it to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. All right. Invoices. I make a motion that uh, we pay $17,764.34 for invoices for uh, for April 14th. Second. It's right Pierce, the nation, National uh, Water Main Cleaning Service. They're 100% done on the yeah, that was basically the retainage. Oh, the retainage. And then they had a, you know, they came back out, inspected um, the work they lined. The That's previous year. New talk. So the retainage was uh, the oh, full of that 15,000. No. There was a little bit of traffic control. Um, yeah, so the that. total was 15,773, and that's complete. Is, is the traffic control in, included in that? Or is yes. that the no, no, no. 15,000 includes the retainage plus a little bit of the traffic the day they were out. Okay. And have you received all the reports from them? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Weston and Samson reviewed everything, signed off on it. That's um, why you had so many pages attached to it because it had all their other backup. Okay. And, and um, did we receive a video? Yes. Of those. Sometimes when well, we have nothing else to do, because we look at videos. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions on the financials? All right, all those in favor of paying 17764 34 mm -hmm. say aye. All right. Oh's carried. All right, new business. Personal well treatment design services uh, amendment. Uh, so this is for our uh, Berkshire uh, Well uh, water treatment plant. Uh, they, they got to the 100% point. Um, they, they went over by and they, they identified some of the items that they basically some extras that, you know, I had them kind of go through. So what you're seeing here um, is those three tasks on page one. Uh, task four was the bidding phase, which was always earmarked on the original contract as a future phase. So now we're getting to that point. So their effort for the bidding phase is uh, 16,677. And the three items uh, for the, to complete the design Total 25,372. Tom, um, let's uh, just ex explain sure, that, sure. that the 25 and then it says for task one. Okay, three, so three, and then 16,000 for task four. Correct. Is that on top of that? Yeah, so the tasks one, two, and three were really part of the design, but they've reached their, their contract amount at this point. And in, in, in throughout the process, I, I, you know, as I reviewed the 30% and the 60% designs, I gave them a couple of things to look into, which they've, they've kind of highlighted here with these tasks one, two, and three. So tasks one, two, and three total 25, 372. And that would be the, as part of the original design contract. So it's, it's an amendment to that or, or an extra to that contract. The original also then earmarked that there would be a bidding phase, which they, we never 
we, we never signed off on or they never gave us a number for until it now got to this point. So for his phase, his task four, the bidding phase, their estimate is at 16,677. Yes. Uh, you want that in two separate motions or you um, want to combine it? I, I would say a, a motion to approve 25,372 for tasks one, two, and three, and 16,677 for task four, as per the amendment dated March 18th, 22, might be the easiest way to do it. You got that, Kathy? I do. So moved. Have a second for discussion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? And that covers everything right now. You may have to repeat a little bit of this. Like yes. I mean, they, they completed their 100% per the last invoice that I got. So they haven't invoiced me since I think it was probably the February invoice. So this is what they're going to go over by. And, and you know, I, again, I asked Marius, hey, is this going to get us to the end, to the final design? And, and this was part, part, part of this was for the, um, some of the changes that we requested Correct. or you requested. Correct. Correct. Okay. And the task four is a total separate. That was for the bidding process. Correct. And there'll be another future phase, which will be the construction. construction. Added. Right, right. 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 So the bidding phase, we never discussed. We never had a number for, we just knew it was coming when we got to this point. So it went over by 25,000? 372, yeah. Based on those three, I, I have those three tasks broken down if you're interested to see what those numbers are. When they're going over like this, do they get warn us in advance? Uh, yeah, I stay on top of Marius just to say, like when the last bill came in, we were at 100% Marius, you know, I need to get an amendment from you. I need to get something from you. It's, it's, it's a fluid process, so it's hard to just put the brakes on it until... They give me something. I come back here and and you know go through the well, whole process. When you requested the changes, did they say it's going to cost roughly uh, X? You know, they probably did these particular items early earlier on, so I, I don't think they knew at that point where they were going to land. How much was the original one? Uh, three um, Don't hold me to this number. I, I I didn't jot it down. I think it was four seventy three four hundred, a number like that. Five percent roughly. Yeah. I mean, there's been other pieces to this too. Obviously, the uh, the, the pilot study was a was a portion of it. Was a was a prior phase drilling the well and, and you know doing the study, getting the diversion permit. I mean, we're we're into this thing quite a bit. Well, you know. Sorry about that. Um, you know, and, and you know, right Pierce is they they talk about tasks one, two, and three. Yeah, that's right. And then, well, they, they, they say, oh, this is why we went over, but nowhere does they could have gone over by a hundred thousand dollars, we wouldn't have known. I, I threw out, I, I try to keep up with Marius and say, hey, as the bills, as I get each bill and I'm seeing what percentage we're at, and I realize we're, gonna, we're getting close to the end, I need to get something from you here. Well, I, I think he has to understand. I, we're not here picking on you. I think he has to understand. Mm. This isn't Christmas. It's not a gift all the time. He has to document and ahead of time what the hell's going on so we know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, he chose a figure of 25000 above at us. And not really know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, his table it, it, on page, I guess whatever page it is at the back of earmarks there, design people that are involved. Right. So you've right. got different tasks. Personally, I think they're sloppy. Right? To be honest with you, by not coming forward ahead of time saying these issues are coming up. They're they're in the project and the project's being developed. And they're looking at the project, they should know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, it's there's not nine thousand people working on it. Right, right. He's got a set few people, and they should have an idea of what's going on. Don't throw curves at us and say, "Well, this is going to happen, this is going to happen," because we have to answer the public on this. Sure. What happens? That's all. Yeah. Okay. It's not your problem; it's their problem. 
Understood. Yeah. Tom, how do we get from the, you know, the uh, change in the from potassium to sodium? Um, I mean, is that I mean, so they they did all the work. Well, they started for, uh, for uh, potassium, and then we decided to go to. Well, they who decided to go to the. I decided to go to sodium because sodium hydroxide is is is, is a chemical that's more commonly used than potassium. Potassium in and of itself is more expensive per gallon. Okay. So I looked long run and said, all right, hey, yeah, we're doing, we're building this now, but then we're going to be buying chemical future years. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm used to sodium hydroxide being more of a, uh, you know, a chemical that's, that I'm used to, that, that more suppliers basically have. So, so basically they, they had uh, designed a system using uh, potassium and then we decided to change to the sodium so they had to redo engineering for that yeah there's drafting there's you know their design calculations for the chemical there's you know it's all got to get looked at in terms of the, 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 the storage tanks the, the feeders and the, and basically the same thing with the digital modification yeah you know, we, you know that again that was me saying hey you, you know what's involved because you know i, I don't want to have that room with the tanks sitting there sweating. Oh yeah, no. I didn't. But I didn't know what was going to be the end of it if we want to basically try to handle that through the air handling system. What's the duration of it? Of of the treatment of the chemicals that's in there? How many times does it have to be changed once a year, twice a year? Oh, how, how often will we buy the chemical? Yeah. Um, I wanted a big enough tank that I could buy it in a bigger volume. So right, but probably once a year. And how much would that? Oh. Uh, Pete, uh, the per gallon price? I, no, I no, no. What, I, what I'm saying to you is but that should be allocated. What we do for maintenance of it, when we know exactly what's going to be every year to do that. Yeah, that yeah. one's going to be, it's going to be hard to say exactly what we're going to need for the sodium hydroxide because it's for pH. And we, depending on what the pH of the raw water becomes. So you, you test the pH every, every, yeah, throughout, all the time. Mm -hmm. Every how many hours? Sorry? How many hours did you say? How how often you test the pH? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna have an online analyzer. Oh, so it's twenty four. It'll, it'll be twenty four seven. And for the, for this plan, for sure. Yeah. And what are you trying to maintain? Uh, pH seven. Um, you want to be over seven? You, seven two, yeah. Seven four. I, I would think comfortably like seven two seven four. Right. I think that's what our distribution is in that ballpark now. You don't want to let it get down too much. So no, because you end up with corrosion with, with green hair. Exactly. Right. And corrosion of no, the people, pipes. Yeah, no one has, but people have green hair. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. If you're in five four, they're gonna have green hair. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it, Kelly, but people will have green hair. <laughs> All right. Is it, we don't foresee any other changes from Maris on, on this. I, I have comments I'm giving him on the specs. So I don't know how much effort it's gonna be. I think he's anticipated comments from me and making changes based on, because I, I just got the specs probably a month and a half ago. Yeah. It's like, well, I, I, would think they, I would think they would have. Yeah, he's got some money set aside. Set aside yeah, for consideration of yeah. that. So, now, you know, because I don't, I, want, I, I, I don't I, want to make a motion to, to say not to exceed. Right. You know, and he comes back to it. Well, well I, I think they did okay in terms of the comments that they got back from, now P and Z and Inland Wetlands had some comments. Um, nothing major though. And the state engineer that looked at it from a technical end, he had relatively minor comments too. Now that wastewater has to be hauled away. The wastewater is from that is going to get end up getting pumped to the sewer. To, to okay. our sewer. Actually, we're going to recycle. Right. When we do a backwash, right. we're going to take the dirty water, we're going to put it in the backwash recycle tank. Okay. It's going to settle. During and the day, first, and then, then you drain. And then probably after a few hours, we're going to start pulling off the top, right? And recycling it back in. Right. You can recycle ten percent. Okay. So if if the well's pumping hundred gallons, we can recycle ten gallons. Mm -hmm. So you'll basically use most of that on a daily basis. You so, can see that in a site glass. If you, uh, uh, we're going to have a sample tap on that, so we're we're going to be able to check it and make sure it's okay. What what level is that? Exactly. And again, you're mixing 10% with 90% right. with raw water. Okay, right. And then the, the sludge, if you will, we'll let it, we'll let it settle on the bottom. Right. And then that's going to be kind of like a trial and error as to when we want to suck out the bottom, the dregs of that tank. Mm -hmm. And that's going to go to the sewer. Right. 
again, we'll have a sample tap on that. So the, 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 probably the normal way you're going to do that is you're going to pull a sample and you'll see how thick it is. Right. And if it's just dirty water, you won't bother sending it to the sewer. You'll let it thicken up a bit. Right. So that'll be the process. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions on the motion of uh, uh, right Pierce bill for 25000 for extra work done on the design phase of the um, Ferguson well? Water treatment plant in the amount of $25,372 for tasks one through three. No, we are. All in favor? All aye. 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 Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, bidding phase for rate Pierce in the amount of $16,677 for task four, which is the bidding phase. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Any, any other discussion on, on that? Um, how does that 16 compare to the other? Because he's done this before for us. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't ask him that question and I didn't try to pull out other projects. They, they, they tend to come up with a percentage, I think, on like the construction admin, the bidding. So six, I, I couldn't tell you what the bidding phase was on the other, pro, like the chestnut tank. Mm -hmm. But again, you're going to like a pre-bid meeting you're preparing the plans, you're putting them in a, in a bid room for contractors to get, you're gonna have a pre-bid meeting, you're gonna have a bid opening, you're gonna review the bids when they come in, you're gonna make a recommendation. So it's a lot of the same tasks. Exactly, that's why I kind of thought so, it would be. Right, so I don't think that number is still be compared. I don't think that number is greater just because the cost of the project is greater. Right, right. Because he has a mirror mark what all the tasks are. Okay, even though I'll approve this anyways. Could yep. you just take a look back yes. at one of the others and shoot an email. I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> or I can amend my motion to say not to exceed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll amend my motion to uh, not to exceed the $16,677 for task four. So All in favor? Aye. Here we go. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Director's report. Okay, I just got a couple of items. Uh, uh, the first, I, I think Matt sent an email, but I just wanted to um, mention it at the meeting, that's the acknowledgement of the uh, the EPA acknowledging our Chestnut Ridge water storage yeah. tank yeah. as part of their, uh, they call it their yeah, Aquarius right, Recognition that. Program. Yes, we did, yeah. So just to fill you in a little bit, there were, we were one of 22 projects that were that were um, recognized. So that, that's good job. That's pretty good. Yeah. So yeah. congratulations to the commission. Um, real quick, two other quick items. Uh, I'm continuing to work with uh, the planning director on developing the sewer flows, both current and looking forward into the future, so that we can, you know, have a better handle on our sewer allocation. So I didn't get a whole lot done this past month because I've been working on this Berkshire plant, but uh, we're going to continue press it on with that. And, uh, the only question I have with that is. There's so much building going on, it's tough to anticipate. Every time you turn around, you're gonna get a 32 units, you're gonna have 250 units. You have no idea what zone he's doing. Well, you know, we have a decent idea. But well, because not all not all the properties are gonna change their zone. No, but if you're in a, a GTOD area, correct, right? You got the bus bar down here, you can have almost 250 units in there if they ever decide to do that. You can't anticipate that. Exactly. No, no, but but that's why I'm, I have to work with Beth a little bit, so she knows the zoning, and and you know we'll kind of put together what a potential what a potential project might be. That that's all you can really do. The only question I have is that I know along the hill road, as part of the sewer allocation, is is there is there a house going across from I don't know past the pump station on the right hand side? That's out of our zone. You you talking about going toward? Um, yeah, by Long Hill Church, just before you get. Yeah, I don't know what's going in there. No, I see a porta potty zone. set out in the lot. It looks like there's putting up. The house way in the back. Yeah, remember the house, but the house in the front. There's a porta potty right out in front now. <laughs> now what zone is that in the R? That zone? That burn? That's not in our zone. Though, I don't think. The no, right hand side, not, I think, is out of the zone. Yeah. But but that's that's not in the sewer allocation, right? I don't think so. No, no, our, no. Uh, any, any R forty. None of the R forties were part of the allocation as far as sewers go. Yeah, I, I, I think I remember. I think the Long Hill Road. 
Well, the hill all the way down on the left hand side was all sewer on the right hand side when it was R40. I think, I think you're right. Right? I was just wondering if, yeah, I don't know. That's just a question. I'm not yeah, I, I don't know the answer, but if somebody comes in, we're going to check that before right, we say, all right. I know the, yeah. <laughs> I know the church did come before us a few years back and we declined it because it, they would have to go across the wetlands. Right, but this is across the street. Yeah. Yeah, I know the sewer main doesn't even go up there. Pierre. Yeah. Next to Pierre's house. The house yeah. is burned. You know, the older house in the back, the, the newer house. Right. right, but then I think there's something going in the front because it. They got a porta potty set up, and I don't think it's set, man, unless they're going to have a field day or something. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, that was that last item. Uh, we talked last time about well number two getting rehabilitated by yeah. SP Church. Tentatively, they're looking at the week of May 2nd. So that's good. We'll get it in before, uh, before Memorial Day. Yeah. And, and that's it for uh, my director's report. Capital improvement projects. Again, not a lot going on. Pretty much so. Yeah. The, the, the water mains, uh, we're waiting on final paving, you know, sidewalks and whatever punch list items. So Guerrero is, you know, pretty much, you know, 90% done. <laughs> and talk about final paving, like uh, Rector Street. We're not going to do final paving in that the town's going to repave that whole we, road. We, we, put the, we put the plans together so that it was just going to be a temporary paving. Right. Okay. Yeah. But Knowing that Bobby was going to right. reclaim it right. or however right. he's going to do right. it. And he's aware of that. We worked okay. that out. Okay. On the Bergstrom well, just some updates. We, we did uh, this past week receive our Bethel and Wetlands approval. We got our PNZ approval. I mentioned DPH, their technical guy looked at it. Very minor comments. Um, I, I'm in the middle of, or now I'm about the end of looking through all the specs, trying to come up with anything that's, you know, a question mark or, you know, Hey, yeah, I'm not sure about this one. So I've got a bunch of comments that are going to go back to Wright Pierce. Um, and I think, uh, when he makes those final, uh, changes, we, we should be about ready to go to bid. So I, I don't want to hold us to this date, but we might be ready to say, let's just say a June 1st date for going out to bid. So we're close. Unfortunately, with the cost of everything, the, the most recent update I got for cost wise, it's escalated and it's like up to like 9 million with contingencies and inflation. And, you know, so don't know where bids are going to come in at and hopefully, you know, they come in favorable. No. Hmm. Um, what was the resolution uh, on the driveway or the roadway going down to it? At one point, they were talking about paving it. Is, is that yeah. off the table? Yeah, okay. because of PNZ and inland wetlands and impervious area and the storm drainage. Basically, we're holding developers and, and projects that are coming into town to a certain you know standard when they're in, putting in more impervious area. Yeah. And it, it's so flat, okay, yeah. and, and it's, it's a, you know. Personally, I don't think it's yeah. necessary. Maybe I think around the building a little bit where the truck has to park. Right. To that, that, it. There is a little bit of paving there, yeah. and that's really okay. it. Yeah, better yeah. off not to pay. Yeah, yeah. so that's where, we, that's where we landed. Yeah, it's just that. Okay. okay. And, and lastly, the SCADA project. We had our kickoff meeting with, uh, with their uh, SCADA engineer last month. So, uh, you know, more to come on that as they get into their design. We've been, I've had my staff going to the different water sites and just kind of jotting down what data points are we collecting, what alarms do we have at each, so that we have a good handle on, you know, our existing stuff. Do we have a budget for that? The, uh, the design contract that we have uh, with Wright Pierce is like 120,400, somewhere in there. And the last construction estimate was like, but now it's old. It was 403,000. Oh. <clears throat> I gotta think that's gotta be at least 500,000 at this point. Wow. But is that something we can phase in, you know, or does that have to be everything completed at one time? Well, again, we got this approved through the, uh, the state DWSRF. Oh, okay. And what we did do is we split out the sewer and the water so that we could phase it in. And actually, all the heavy duty um, like antennas at, at some of the sites that are gonna be used for both will get put in with water. Some of the servers, you know, the main brains that are gonna get put in that are gonna get say housed here in this building that could be used for both. 
will be put in with the water. So we, we kind of, we, we definitely split it up a little bit. Okay. Thank you. And that's all I had. Okay, hey, Kelly. You're okay. Cool. Um, I just got a call. We're getting ready to turn the water back on for the wood. So they got it's a four inch uh, circle break. So we're getting ready to put that one through before it starts to rain. Yep. Um, quick things. Um, we have two more incidents with foam at um, um, Car Park One. Uh, what it does, it sends a transducer off, makes it pump right down. We, by the time we get out there and we find the foam, we can't track it down. I've gone to majority of the companies that are doing any kind of uh, uh, not cleaning but um, machine work. The only thing they're using is. Um, with a green, uh, simply green. Simple green. That's the only thing they're using to, to do it. So somewhere we're getting foam in the system. Um, it's, it happens about once a month. When it does happen, it kind of raises havoc with the um, with the transducers. So we're just every time it happens. See what's what's happening is it's not happening until it hits the pumps. Then the pumps are agitating it and making the foam. The transducer is seeing the foam, and it's 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 registering as full. And it's pumping it all the way down instead of just in, in its rate. But we're still, just to make you aware, we're working on it. We just really don't know how to achieve it. Uh, it's, it almost smells citrusy, but it's like I say, it's not, it's not that uh, simply green, but that's, that's the only really issue on the sewer side. Uh, since I, I wasn't at last month's meeting, we had a, um, a saddle rod out at, at 32 Topstone. They ride it right off the main. Uh, that was repaired three quarter inch line. Uh, uh, 5A Midway had one in their front yard that was on them. They repaired it. Uh, one Milwaukee we had go on, it was, uh, it was the 20th of last month. Uh, it was a lead whip on an old six inch line and it split probably about four inches. Uh, that was kind of chasing it because you had two zones. You've got your chestnut and your Milwaukee there and you've got two mains there, but they were able to get it within the day and got that all buttoned up. Um, you heard me just say about Fleetwood. <clears throat> I met with Tinker yesterday, and they are going to give me a quote. Um, they will give me a quote in man hours on flipping the services from the four to the eight. Now, we had a break today. We shut down the four. While they, got, while they were making the repair, I had my guys going up and down the street to see who's out of water. So we're going to know which ones are on that four that need to get flipped to the eight or the 12 up above Hudson. So we're, we're close on that. And as soon as he gives me a quote, then you know, you'll see the quote, the hourly quote. Um, it's one of those things you just can't figure out how, you know, whether they're gonna have to get renewed across the street if they're not copper, uh, the condition of the copper. So it's gonna be- Concrete in the road. Yeah, concrete in the road. It's gonna be service by service. What, what I'd like to do is start with just doing Hudson up to Mansfield. There's 10 services there. Get those, see how it works out, see how it works out with the, with the contractor, and keep moving on that. Um, they're also going to give you a vector truck rate because they're using the they've got a vector truck that they're using now. So matter of fact, they're just doing, they're using that on the service over mm -hmm. there now. Um, two hydrants have been repaired. Uh, was working down that list, and the last thing I have is according to emails where the Gen said is finally come in for Twelfth Street, and they're going to be working on it at the beginning of next month. I guess it would take them a week. I, I would between everything, between the dismantling and, mm -hmm. and what have you. Yeah. But that's okay. uh, that's about where they're at. There's nothing else I'd like to shoot over there before it starts to rain. Get that water back on. There was a break when there was a break on Maple Avenue. Well, that was, that was, that was, that was the one. That's the one. That was the Milwaukee one. Yeah. Huh? It was a service that was feeding number one Milwaukee. You know how that little cutoff goes off? Right. There's a six. It was a six inch main there. That's what was leaking. And that was a lead whip too, right? It was right? a lead whip, yeah. Probably, like I say, it was probably six inches long. Now you're yeah. concerned about lead whips with the state. That, that old main may have a lot of lead whips. Well, whip. I'm kind of hoping maybe we can switch over to the other one. Yeah. Switch it over on the 12, get it onto a different system. You change yeah. it off that one, put it on the 12. Yeah. yeah. I want to get back. All right, okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. All right, thanks. And girl. All right. One, one, one thing we found out, the... The, um, the chestnut zone where you come out of like South Street and then you get to Greenwood Avenue. I didn't think it crossed over. Oh, are you talking about uh, Hickok? Uh, yeah, uh, and I'll, me I'll mention that valve too. Yeah, we found a few things out. So I didn't think the high pressure crossed over to like where the food bag is. 
evidently we have high pressure that runs across the street down maple it veers off where milwaukee you know veers off that little path yeah and then it makes its way and it's high pressure to oxford so it, it's there's a high pressure to loop all of that all of those streets as well as then there's a low pressure i i thought i thought the six inch was just a dead end that's not it's and it's looped. not it's looped so it, to get it to take it off high pressure and get rid of that loop we have some valves in place that we can shut but i think we also would need to install a zone valve or a separation valve like a greenwood and chestnut so i don't know if it's worth doing yet i wouldn't want to make a long dead end I'd rather keep it looped at yeah, this point, yeah. unless we can put it all over onto the onto the Eureka side. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at that a little further. But the other thing, while we were there digging, not knowing which main had the leak or was it a service or what, we realized something. The 12 inch line that comes up from the wells, okay, when it gets to Hickok, it'll turn and go up Hickok and it gets around to this side of town. Okay. Yeah, it went up to the water tank. There's no valve on that 12 on the other side of the Hickok intersection. So if we had to shut the 12 down, we'd be shutting it on the well side of Hickok. And we would not be able to use the 12 at all to get to this side of town. It's kind of a deficiency of not having a valve. In other words, you should have three valves at that intersection. So Kelly and I were like, if we ever have to shut that 12, and we need to install an insertion valve. So we're gonna look into getting a quote on that and then putting a valve just, I guess it's uphill from Hickok on that 12 inch. So if we ever have to shut it down from that point on going towards the food bag, you can shut the valve, the wells will still feed and then be able to get up Hickok and, around. and then get to the other side of town. So when we were looking at that, Kelly was like, I think we have potentially a problem if we have to shut down and sure enough, he's right. So. I'll look into it and see what we have. Yeah, do. I mean, we've done insertion valves when we had the break at uh, the railroad tracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We put in two of them. I'm trying to think of what their number was, but it might be 20 grand and put that valve. Expensive, in. Yeah. yeah, so it might be a $20,000 valve. Yeah. yeah. But you got to do it live. You got to just do yeah. it as an yeah. insertion. Oh, yeah. So if that's coming up. I'll probably want to do that, you know, in the near future. Okay. Um, other, other than that, I, I saw a couple of emails. There was one about 52 Reservoir Street and then marking out the, the road and stuff and for the water and sewer. Uh, was there a problem with that, that it didn't get done in a timely fashion? Uh, I, I saw that email. I, I, it's done. I know. It's, yeah, it's done. Okay. Um, I, I didn't ask them, you know, how it fell through the cracks. So. Okay. And also, uh, the, the homeowner wants to do the sewer hookup on uh, Bud Drive. 30, 30 bud drive. 30 bud. Um, yeah, but I think that's all set. That's just, all. Yeah. All right. Well, I, they came in. I just, yeah. Oh, that's was, the one they added a bedroom or something? Yeah, or? I think they just added that one. Yeah. 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 I just that uh, we inspected it and everything. And yeah, he needed an allocation. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. all. Yeah. 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 Oh, an allocation for it. Was it just added a bedroom? Did a, oh, he, they added a bedroom. Oh, he, he didn't hook up the no, sewer. He, he was already hooked up. Oh, all right. Okay. So when they add an extra bedroom, we we get a sewer allocation for the 80 gallons. Oh, all right. Okay, I understand. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank okay. You. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. I have a question. When did, I know up on Jurica Road, they complained years ago that they had a house in front. It was a two-family house, one in the front. I'm sorry, so which which road? Juniper Road. Juniper. We had an owner in the front and rented a unit in the back, and it was one service and one sewer. And they created all kind of havoc here, but we have a habit now allowing two, a duplex on one service line and one sewer line. Even though it's a rental unit, mm -hmm. it can become into a condo. They can sell it separately as a separate living unit. So I think we have to look at when they're coming in with these duplexes that we look at two sewers and right. two waters. Because how do you how do you separate the layer on? You don't. I thought we had talked about okay. that a couple of years I, ago. I, I, I mean, there is a there is another way to do it. You, you put a meter pit in 
Right. And the bill goes to the homeowners association. Well, that well, with the duplex, but you only got one sewer line lateral, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which prohibits if something happens, you've got two units now. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something we have to look and, at. And again, if a repair comes around, that's got to be part of their you know, yeah, association. You created, a, you created the monster at the beginning. Oh, I, no, I understand. It should be addressed at the beginning. If it's, if it's a duplex, it's built to be able to be a two family at one time or another, it should have two waters and two sewers. Yeah, it's got a but, tenant, but it's going to go up to this, this the main for the sewer, or is it going to go up to one lateral? No, it should it should be two separates. Because once you once you want a single main and it's split off, if that line gets plugged, you got two units shut down. That's why we changed it. That's why we mm -hmm. went. The problem that we had before when it was with when it was an owner rented unit. It's a rental unit, it's not yeah. a condo. Yeah. But when you do build a duplex with a tenant separation wall, at any time can be converted to a two family. Then you're stuck with one meter. Mm -hmm. You have no control. Which is no good. It sells that way. You Once that house is occupied, you have no control over it. And they can sell that tomorrow morning as a duplex and you have no control until something happens. Mm -hmm. So I think we create a monster by doing that. Me, me myself, I, I, I like making it a meter pit, and if it's a if it's a if it's a tent if it's a rental situation, the landlord's covering both units. If they convert it to a condo, they've got to have a condo association, even if it's two. No, they don't. For two, it, you it could be a duplex house by itself. I can build I can build a duplex on a piece of property. Right, it's not a condo association; it's only occupied. But are, aren't like what if what if the roof goes? Who who's responsible for the roof to replace a roof or something like is that? It, is there kind of association between the two no. tenants or the so. two owners? Marty has a comment. Yeah, Marty. Yeah, I, 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 I just I just hold on a second. Jesus Christ. In regards to what Pete's talking about, the big issue has always been who pays for what because we've had a couple of instances with two family houses in the past where there was only one meter, one line going in. And what the landlord did was he split the cost between the two of them. So one, one tenant would pay their share of the water and sewer, the other one wouldn't. And at some point it got large enough that the tax collector wanted to shut them down. And we've had more problems with that. And I happen to think that Peter's absolutely right. Any any multifamily building that goes up that's got water and sewer should be separate lines going to both and separate meters. Then you don't have to worry about it. That's it. But that's on the water side, but on the sewer side. Yeah. It just it, there's got to be a better way to do it than that cuz what if you have 10 units. No, no. Ten sewer I'm not lines. talking about. You ten can't run up. 10 water no. lines and 10 sewer lines. All we're trying to tell you is. No, no. Correct? No, I'm telling what I'm well, trying to water tell line, you. Can't. You, you. What I'm trying to yeah. tell you is no. If you have condominiums, right? Mm -hmm. You should have separate sewer and separate water lines to each one. I, 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 that, that's I, not that may not practical. make any sense to you, but we've been, con it's been that way. As far as I've been here. No, I understand. I understand. Because it's it's individual ownership. And so the association covers the association covers the exterior of the building. You own the interior. You only own paint to paint. Right. The association owns everything. But else. you can make the water and sewer but the bills. Problem that you have, but this is a problem that you have. Mm -hmm. If there's if I vacate that house, say there's a five unit condo or six, right? In the middle of the unit, the guy goes on vacation to Florida and shuts his water off, shuts you know, shuts the heat off, has a major freeze up. Now you got that whole building shut down. Okay. We have condos in Norwalk that were. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't no, care about. Right, I'm just saying. I, I understand it. Denver is house a water line to go through the middle of the building down there. We had a unit on the end unit. Remember the, the second one, and she had no water. It froze up because the unit froze up 
And she had no water to get water because they had a common line built too. Mm -hmm. No, that's why you have separate water and separate sewers. It's all right. I, I just I don't know that it's practical to do that. I don't well, care if it's practical or not. <laughs> yeah. We're we're a utility. Well, we can do what we want. I understand. I, I understand. I'm not here. I'm not here worried about well, association. Well, let me ask I, I, as a for instance, just like out the street here. Well, that was just going to point. Those individual sewer lines go out to a manhole, or do they go out to a, a a main that goes to the manhole? There's a meter pit, so the water is common, and if it's if they're rentals, the landlord's paying for it. That's right. It, that's if they make it a condo association, no. they'll have to make the water part of the common charges, and the one sewer line would be covered common also. That that yeah. that's not necessarily true. No. Well. There's, there's plenty of condos that don't have, uh, you know, separate separate charges or any alternative. There's some that do have that they're included in the common charges. So that that's not the case. It depends on how the lines have been put in. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on South Street, not the graduates meeting now, but on South Street they put a moratorium on condominiums because they couldn't control the accessory use like swimming pools and play yards and stuff like that. So they put them right there. Anglestead built a five unit building on South Street as rental units, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't a condominium. A year down the line, he turned around and sold them his condos. All not occupied. You had no control over it. It was done without even, the more, you know, he eliminated the moratorium because they were rental units, formed the association, they formed the condo association and the town had no control over it. So there's ways of getting around this stuff. All I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to be the dead horse. It's not right. You, you're creating a monster. There's a big problem up on Juniper Road. Well, we got, remember, Kelly went berserk over it. Mm -hmm. And then off, the, off of Freeman Avenue, they got built a duplex. They allowed them to use one water line and one sewer line. You can't. All right. Well, it's something let's look into. Well, I, I, again, I thought like two years ago we had this we, Yeah. So, yeah. And we said we changed the separate water that. lines to each unit. Yeah. And we looked up to that. And that was what we said. What we've been doing is if there were rental units, it's under the purview of the landlord. Regardless, we had discussed that we would have separate water lines to every unit and a separate meter to every unit. That was the conversation a year and a half ago or whatever. Let's think out the recent regulations. And 20, see how 27, it 2017, I think they are. Okay. And we'll, we'll just review it. We have to modify it. We'll modify it. And just make every individual meter. That's where it should be. At, yeah. at least the water. Right? Yeah, the water, I think, yes. is more tolerable. This right here I think the sewer sure. lines, you're going to have people screaming if they're going to put in 10 units yeah. and you want 10 sewer lines. I think you're developing. Well, I, I, I think your individual sewer lines could go up to a manhole, and then the manhole, as long as the manhole is lower than your lowest thing, if it, there's a clog in the manhole, it'll, it'll come up in the street. You know, and it's no different with the sewer line. If you have a sewer line feeding it a house, a duplex, and there's a bath, the bathroom at the lower level mm -hmm. tied into that sewer line, that bathroom at the lower level has to have a back water valve in it prevent the sewer from backing into the house. Because the code addresses that if the sewer, if the bathroom is lower than the manhole in the street, you gotta have a backwater valve. So that's why you gotta be very careful if you ever get a sewer so, ditch. Marty, if, if someone does make a condominium out of their property, they, they have to develop some kind of a condo management or a condo association, or there's gotta be some rules so that the buyer knows what he's buying, correct? Yes, um, we we talked about a couple of years ago with the larger projects. Like I wasn't unfortunately I didn't make the last meeting, but I saw that there's uh, Frank Saunders is coming in with one bedroom units. Um, I I've always been a believer that what we should do is we should advise planning and zoning when we say everything is okay for water and sewer that they put a caveat in the approval that says very simply that in the event it's converted to condominiums, they got to have separate separate lines for water and sewer. And, and that way you, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have a problem. And um, if everybody knows up front, so be it. But yeah, they're supposed to have in their 
their documentation, it should be able to, usually they have a public offering statement to start out with, which is much more detailed for brand new units, telling them what's happening, what the utilities are and how it works. And then after that, you'll, you'll have, it's, it's usually in a resale certificate, you can find the information. So let, let me ask you this, if the building was built with one water line going in, metered in a pit out at the road, and one sewer lateral tying into the sewer main, could you also ask PNZ to basically say, instead of if they convert them to condos, they have to put in individual water lines because that just wouldn't happen. Could you tell them that if they convert them to condos, that the common water and sewer has to be part of the common charges and part of the condo association common elements? Wouldn't that get you to the same place? The problem is, I don't believe that's what our regs say. No, no, they don't. I'm, I'm just asking you a hypothetical. You have one line for each for each unit. I, so I, I, if you're going to do something like that, it's got to be changed. And, I, you know, the, the big thing is, is that I don't think, I think most people, most builders, when they do a larger project like that, a lot of them do intend to just do rental. The problem with the pit is, Tom, is that what they're going to do is, they're going to monitor the water and sewer going in. And what they're going to do is what they're just going to charge the tenants, whatever percentage that there is there. If there's 10 tenants, each one pays 10%. Well, if only five pay it, the landlord may not take it and pay the water and sewer bill. Now the town wants to shut, shut the, the, shut the water off. And some poor schmuck who's been paying the water and sewer all along says, Hey, wait a minute. I've been paying my water and sewer. It's not my fault. That's the problem that you have. And Pete's right, Juniper Ridge is loaded with those. Absolutely mm -hmm. loaded with those. They're a real mess. Mm -hmm. but Marty, if the, the, why isn't the landlord or the, the, uh, the owner of the property responsible for, responsible the, for the bill? Are you saying that when we, uh, you got a condo project with 10, 10 uh, residents, we, we don't send a 10% bill to the residents. We send a one bill to the association and doesn't the association pay for the water or and sewer? It depends. Like I said, you have some associations where water and sewer is included. You have some that are not included that it's built separately. Well, obviously if you don't have separate meters, it's kind of hard to build separately, but I'm talking about the situation where the landlord and the landlord because Tom is addressing that the easiest way to do is to put a pit in the road. So let's say you got a three family house. The landlord puts the pit in the road. All right. He monitors the, the money. The bills are coming to him. He divides the bills up three ways. And then what happens is two of the tenants pay like they're supposed to. The third doesn't pay. And then the landlord doesn't pay the town. Well, the town wants to come in and shut it off. And the two, the two tenants are going, hey, wait a minute. We paid our share. You know, how are you going to turn your water off on us? And we've had that happen many times. But Tom, just like you said, across the street here, right? Mm -hmm. Across the street, there's going to be one meter on each building, one meter on the building. Each building will have to be able to meter it, mm -hmm. right? What they do at Dolan Plaza is one meter on each building, and the, op the owner of the building has individual meters on each unit. He sub meters it. He put his own meters in this way here. He's not getting it, trying to figure out what the water use was. And, and owners can do that. And that's what they did. And I understand But that. the owner's responsible for the bill. And I understand mm -hmm. that. But what I'm saying to you, when it's just an individual lot, that's a duplex. There's no association. It's owner-occupied. And he can do what he does what he wants. That's but, I, what, what, what will we do if the, if the landlord doesn't pay the water and sewer? We're going to shut the water off, Marty. What do you do then? You're going to shut the water off. Shut the whole building down. Yeah. You know, and, and if it's a condo association, you're going to build the condo association. And if they don't pay the bill, you're going to shut the water off. Yeah. You, you never know. He could be charging the residents for the water and not paying the bill himself. But, but that's that's you know the, the tenant has to basically yeah, but, uh, yeah. you know, it's, see it's, what he's getting it's, into. It's, well, I'll tell you when you go to we go Palm Street Road to Danbury, that big condominium project. Over there in Denver, right over there behind Megara Park, that big project is individual water and individual sewers on every unit. 
individual water and individual sewer on every unit. Mm -hmm. No, we I got it. We like have, up at the summit, we have individuals. We, we had a total freeze up that one unit. And everybody else had water and everybody else had sewer. And that guy had a major freeze up. Mm -hmm. That's what happened was he shut the heat down and went, went to Florida. So mm -hmm. hell with it. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right, let's pull the regulations. Let's I look got, at it, see what's going on. Mr. Okay. I got one question. Yes, sir. Up at the firehouse, they did a backyard repair years ago when we were doing the addition. So we have to look and change in that line somehow to get a new line in there. Well, I, I just Kelly overheard us talking about it. Kelly's going to get some prices. It'll have to go to the board of selectmen. It's not our, not no, the maybe, board. Yeah, it's not. It it's a service. It's, yeah, it's a service. So we gave it to the town. Right. Kel Kelly went out. He did the legwork. He got yeah, a couple so of prices. Got a new Okay. We yeah. handed it off to the chief, and and I remember that that, nothing yeah. ever happened. Never ever happened. But. And unfortunately, the contractor who gave him the price, the following year, he held his price again. Well, that was a previous yeah. chief. So, well, I think what we have to do is get this other chief in gear, saying, "Wait a minute." Well, it's just, we'll get but it to the town. The yeah. chief needs to go through and make sure he's going to get it approved when he comes yeah. back to to the. Board of Finance or wherever he's getting the money from. Well, it starts at Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen. Well, so, the town's yeah. going to pay for it. The town built. Yeah. Well, that's what it was. That's what was going to happen three, four years ago too. When yeah, it didn't but I mean, it, it didn't the problem right. they have is they can't repair. No more repairs can be done with the driveway. No, I, I understand. Yeah. They, they've yeah. been waiting for the line to go in so they can fix the driveway. Yeah. Right. But they got to. Someone from the town's got to push it forward. Well, it's whether true. it's the chief or DPW or whoever. Oh, the DPW won't get about. It's, 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 it, what I'm saying is we have to have the chief maybe you know, get hold of personal app and, and yeah. figure it out. Well, right. Kelly's going to get some prices again. He'll give it to the chief or he'll you know, give it right we'll to the from there. board of selectmen. So. Yeah. Okay. One other, one other thing, Mr. Chairman, I don't want to tell you. I know you want to go. At least you're not looking at your phone. Uh, <laughs> preventive you maintenance right. program. Start looking at some of these old pump stations and stuff. Mm -hmm. I know you're busy, but I mean they they've been there a long time. Yeah, I think they're gonna have to put something together. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of old ones. Do we have a written program? That are old, old dogs. <laughs> you know, Sorry. Do we have a written program? Preventive maintenance program? When I mentioned it a couple of months ago, Kelly got visibly angered. <laughs> I don't know that he was I don't know that he was angered, but uh yeah, we're we're looking at the stations. We uh, get a, we're getting the wet wells pumped out. That's one of the biggest uh, situations. All the rags, um, you know, we've replaced a bunch of pumps along the way. There's there's a couple of stations that basically need to get revamped. The two Clark stations. Um, I'm I've been looking at the metering at some of the other stations, and some of that's got to get improved as well. Unfortunately. Where they attached the meters, they were they're right up against like a, a fitting. They didn't give you like a separate vault where you have straight pipe, because these clamp-on meters need, you know, five sure. diameters upstream and three diameters downstream or the other way around. Right. And they're right up against the T. Yeah. So I don't know how completely accurate they are. We're looking at Ber uh, Berkshire. Um, I found some information out on the flume that's down in the manhole and the equipment that we have. We were talking about maybe installing a manhole downstream and putting in a meter and the information I found, I, 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 we tr I tracked it down and ended up, I was on the phone with the manufacturer. We found the equipment that they purchased uh, nine years ago. And the vendor, I, I forget the name of the vendor, he has our records right in there. And I found out if we send him the, the transducer and the actual you know uh, brains, the, the keypad, we can ship it out to them for like 275 bucks and they'll evaluate it for us and let us know if it's worth fixing yeah. or should be replaced. Well, that, that's an improvement to not break. Yeah. Well, but what about a manual that says every six months you have to lubricate this every four months? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have one at this point. But well, is it in the yeah. plan to we're make one? one? Yeah, you're right. We've, we've talked mean, about we're it. Gonna, we're spending $9 million to put a well and treat the water mm -hmm. and everything else. Going. It's all crisis management. You should have a maintenance program. Right. Yes. yes. Is is that part of what uh, Wright Pierce will do? Uh, the well system. Yeah, the we're gonna system? we'll have a we'll have an equipment list, manufacturer serial number, and and what the some of the maintenance I items are. Maintenance. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we have hot come in. They do our chlorine analyzers. 
every quarter. They come in, they calibrate them. So there, there's certain things, yeah, we're doing them. Right. Generators, yeah, we're doing them. We, they come out twice a year and they maintain them. So I said, how often do you do these? Does someone open a book and say? I, that's the thing. I, I don't. I don't have an overall system-wide right. manual. So that that's a goal for sure. Right. right. That's we we've been talking about it. So I think there's enough people to do it. Right. I mean, yeah. No. I don't want to hear we're overworked. We go there. No, no, we're not overworked, but you want the right people doing yeah. it. Correct. Well, that's what yes, you have you to do. do. But I mean, we should know what's going on because, well, we have to send this one out to the ground down. We got to go this one over here. I mean, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. We should have it. Like I said, a preventive maintenance program to be able to come up with. Hopefully. It's not spreading yeah. in the new, but yeah. you got old stuff that's just been there. Look at down at Clark Park. How were them pump stations in there? The 90s, huh? early 90s. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a, that's just the thing about Clark Park. You know, we're we're expanding those four more lots down there. Do we need to upgrade the pumps down there? Well, can we, can't well no my yes. Can we get any money towards the upgrade? I put in the, we we had something came around, it was called uh congressionally directed spending. Okay, some money was getting thrown out. I think Senator Murphy and Blumenthal this grant situation came up. So I wrote up probably 12 different projects, sewer side and water side. Um, the only two that I got okayed and you had to sift through them and you were, there were no guarantees you were gonna get any of them. But unfortunately the two projects that we have through DWSRF, not unfortunately, but they made the list. So I'm working continuing to work towards really it's, it's in their hands right now, but we might be able to get some additional grant money towards the Bergstrom. But I wrote up about four or five different sewer projects, replacing pumps, rebuilding stations, and they didn't make that cut. So. Well, what I was asking you with the development of those four lots, yes. we didn't put anything in for upgrading the pumping station to service those four lots. No, but I've, I've got a quote out to Blake Equipment, who does a lot of the maintenance for us, yeah. talking about preventative maintenance, just rebuilding that whole station. Yeah. Well, not so to I'm, prolong I'm it again, that maybe we should have went to the town and said they they spend seven hundred thousand dollars to help build the extend the utilities down there. Maybe it should have been eight hundred thousand, and PUC gets a hundred thousand to upgrade the pumping station. Yeah. I mean, that so, station runs, <laughs> the hours on those pumps are, are so minimal. minimal. Right. The four well, extra, well, but it had, something. You never something. know what's going to move in down there. True. No, so. But the, 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 the problem is that the road. Yeah. And, and, and just like grand money, that's great to get your grand money. We're still waiting for the generator stuff over here at the, at the, well, we'll, we'll the, the sewer plant. Yeah. yeah. Well, right? Kelly, well, Kelly said it's yeah. coming next early next month. But it, how long have we been paying for a generator? It kills you. That's what I like, understand. You could go out with instead of hell with a grant, go out and buy the damn thing and then work. You know what I'm saying? I'm not getting grant money for that. That's how long no, we've waited no, for it to get our hands on. We're paying, to get. You're paying $2,800 we, we, a month. Yeah. Pete, we ordered it in July. I know that. But I'm just saying. Whether I had money in a grant money sitting in my pocket ready to pay cash, and, it didn't matter. But 28, yeah, but I'm just saying. 20, just like Eureka, how long was that generator up yeah. in Eureka? Yes, I that was forty two hundred dollars a month. I mean, Christ! I mean, you... I know, right? Yeah. All uh, right. Motion to adjourn. So move. <laughs> You're trying to shut me up. <laughs> second. Is it working? Yeah. Well, if I get a second, second. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you all. Well, Pete, you don't necessarily have to shut up, but it's just not part of the meeting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just saying it just, yeah. No, but it's not that rich.